Yes, I must confess, this looks like a big mess. But it makes sense. At least it makes sense to me. Um, this is the point at which the dashboard comes out. And all the wiring that needs to be done gets done. This is my brief video on morphing the VVTi 2JZ computer to the MA70 1987 Toyota Super Chassis. It was pretty necessary to remove all of this, all of this, to get to the back, to the wire loom back there, um, and to get to a few body plugs so that the engine itself can, uh, can integrate with the car uh, not just getting it to run with the battery power but also getting all of the dashboard components to work like it used to when it came out of the factory in 1987 uh, I've added a few things too like a wideband oxygen sensor um, I've got some other wires in here like for my fuel pressure gauge um, not really sure where I'm gonna put make a little pod or something I'm thinking where the ashtray used to go because uh, I'm not a smoker I'm 18 years quit hallelujah and uh, you know getting off topic for a minute that's the best thing you could do for yourself if you are a smoker right now anyway I digress I will say the most important body plugs you're gonna need for this car to integrate this engine with this car is this one right here I believe that one's B1 um, Where's the other one? This one right here, I think is C1. And here's their counterparts. Uh, this plug, which used to plug into the computer and did a lot of other things, is going to get plugged in again, but it's going to have a lot of wire splices, as will the other one. And then the other important one is outside, under the hood actually. I believe this one is C1. This is the C1 plug. And this is, I think, its natural spot. If you like neat wiring, don't be an idiot like me and chop this. Because I had to figure this out after my harness was in. And now I'm going to have to run it all the way back there. And jump in to the big harness before I get to the firewall. But if you're taking the engine out, the 7M, I recommend keeping this wire intact. And follow the same route you had, which would probably be under the manifold, over the firewall, and into that little cubby hole. Another important thing, too, is the little grommet. You're going to destroy this grommet, getting it off of here. I found this one on, I believe, a 2005 Toyota Camry. It fits perfectly in this hole, and it's just big enough to let all of my junkery in there. This is my wide band. I'm going to have to clamp some of that stuff down. I've still got a few little things to wire like the reverse light because once again like a fool I cut wires without knowing where they went so uh, you know my bad but learn from my mistakes don't do like me just learn from me the next piece of advice I would like to offer is if you don't have one of these by all means do you the best you can to get one because this is your best friend when it comes to working on these cars and uh, let's see while my computer is booting, if it'll turn on, here we go. I'd like to explain that a little bit. The thing about these manuals, which makes them totally awesome, is that this came from Toyota, not from Haynes or Climber or any of those guys from AutoZone. This is from Toyota themselves. This is not just the electrical, oh, well, let me back up. I've got both the uh, repair manual and the electrical wiring diagram. They go hand in hand because one of them shows you pretty much diagnostic procedures. Um, it goes through everything from body electric to how to do things like, uh, you know, uh, every system that you can think of is in this book. But particularly for integrating the VVTi with the MA70 body, this is most instrumental for what we're doing here because this has all of the electrical diagrams that you need, specifically things like uh, EFI system, charging system, because those are most important. Um, if you're not dumb like me and you didn't cut any of your other wiring, 
and you know exactly where your wiring is for everything that's not on the engine that's part of the engine harness that needs to stay intact things like backup lights uh, what uh, the speed sensor on the transmission that's important if you're going to use cruise control because that's also something that you could uh, you may want to keep um, the air conditioner circuit uh, you know climate control whatnot ABS things like that but for the purpose of this video I wanted to show you guys how I uh, how I figured out how to get this engine to work with this car and let's see if I got it I've got this downloaded come on come on act right there we go okay so I'm sure a lot of you guys know being online uh, on the internet there this fella named Wilbo666 did a wonderful bang up job on uh, the wiring content for the Jay-Z engines, not just this VVTi, but this is particularly the publication that you can find easily on Wikipedia, I believe it is. Um, this right here just kind of shows you, uh, you know, the body or uh, the uh, ECU plugs, B1 through F60, and all of this information shows you what each one does, and all the way down to uh, even some of the body plugs that are on there. I want to say. Uh, uh, F59, this is one of the last ones, then you have stuff like, uh, what he calls, um, BF1, BF1's kind of a, an important one, because you need a couple of off of there, and then BF2 has a couple of things as well on it, and what I did for the purpose of simplification, because I looked over this thing over and over and over again, and I looked in this manual over and over and over again, to try to figure out some things okay one thing that you have to do is you have to know what all these body plugs do so the way the way it makes sense to me is I actually wrote down a description and even the shape of uh, the body plugs like the ones I was just showing you in the car now these two over here are pretty much the control circuits for the Jay-Z engine the F59 and F60 plugs you're probably never going to get those with an engine when you buy it. Simply because in Japan, when they cut the engine out of the car, there's a lot of stuff that they don't give you. Um, you know, like the, because these are part of the Aristo body. These are controlling the computer. But the rest of the plugs on the computer, with rare exception, are just basically already plugged in and ready to go. So if you're using the twin turbo equipment on this engine, you're pretty much wired up with the exception I think of one ground and I think one uh, one other wire so that being said once you have the descriptions of all of these and then you also know that B1 yeah that's B1 M1 and C1 are basically the three plugs you need to control this engine and to have instrumentation in the 87 Supra then you can make a little chart and that's what I've done here. Now, even though the electrical manual has all of this information, it's not in one place. I had to go through the whole manual and find what every pin on B1 does. And that's what I've written down here. So once I did that, that kept me from having to flip through and through the book to figure out what each pin did. I wrote it down right here. And I'll hold the camera a little still in case somebody wants to cheat off of that. Which I don't mind. You know, um... I'm, like I said, I do these videos to be helpful, but also so there's something I can look back on as well. Um, C1, or M1, is another one there, and you can see that one's pretty much uh, instrumentation. Let me get that out of the way of the computer. That's pretty much your instrumentation for M1. And the C1 body plug is basically to start it and get your uh, uh, fuel injection going, because um, that's where the relay is, right by the battery. That one brings everything inside. So, without further ado, this is the uh, this is the conversion chart that I made, and it may not make sense to everybody, but let me explain what you're looking at. You can see at the top there, you got two JZ GTE VVTi on one side, which means that's the body plug or the uh, computer plug or engine. Let me say engine harness plug that you're going to be dealing with, 
And this is the MA70 or 1987 Supra body plug that you're going to be dealing with. So let me kind of zoom out a little bit again so you can get the big picture here. If you look at the top, B1 pin 21 goes to ground, just to give you an example. So B on the B1 body, uh, JZ to, uh, pin 21 on the computer needs to be grounded. F59, you need two. You need pin 20 and two. One for the tack and one for the starter. And those, as you can see over to this side, the tack will go to body plug M1 pin 4. So as we go on down the line, you'll see that F59 is very few. I think there's just two of them there uh, for, uh, for control. F60 is basically all your battery stuff. That's where uh, the computer gets its power. That's how it knows that you're starting the engine. With, uh, For example, uh, on F60 pin 9, ignition switch goes to body plug B1 pin 17. That's telling the computer you're trying to start it, so it wakes it up. Um, I did make a note right here. The uh, the EFI system for the JZ engine uses about 10 more amps of current, so you're going to have to change your EFI fuse from a 15 amp to a 25 amp. I haven't done that yet, but I have a feeling I'll be blowing fuses if I don't. So, we get down to BF1. You see that um, BF1 is basically uh, the sense for your alternator. Um, the rest of BF2 is uh, goes to pretty much B1. And you see the, uh, the the plugs here, for example, B1. If I look at B1 over here, and I go to um, B1, say for example, B1 pin 17. Pin 17 is ignition coil, uh, fuel uh, f igniter. The 87 had a noise filter, which is pretty much just a capacitor in, in parallel with all of that. Um, and yeah, so um, and then then we get down to uh, instrumentation, the M1 body plug. Okay, for your water temperature sensor, you're gonna have to figure out a way to adapt if you want that old sensor. And I'm not sure there may be other sensors on the market that will more readily fit on the JZ engine, but I use the original one. You need M1 body plug pin nine to actually grab the temperature sensor. This one needs its own ground, so you're gonna use pin six. And I would imagine I would ground that on the manifold. That's why that's there. For your oil pressure, you just need one wire coming from that old biscuit-shaped oil pressure gauge. I put that in one of the twin turbo holes because I was only using one. That would go to body plug M1 pin 7 because it's already grounded on the block. So you're not going to need two for that. Now the charge light, don't quote me on this, guys. Because the charge light is that pink wire that goes from the alternator to the to the computer. I'm thinking about splicing that and sending that off to the dashboard. I just don't know what's going to happen when I do that. But for the most part, I'll zoom out again. And now that if hopefully you understand my hieroglyphs here, I was, I've got second grade handwriting, I know. But if you can understand this, this is pretty much what it takes to get the engine running, get your alternator charged. Uh, I'm sorry, get your battery charged while you're running. Um, and to, you'll be able to see things like oil pressure, water temperature, um, things like that. Now when it comes to the other things like reverse lights and all of that stuff, um, air conditioning, I defer you to this. There's nothing in the world that's better than the very manual that was made for the very car and the very year that you're using this in. So with that, I give everybody good luck and I hope that I've done anything positive for the mk3 2jz community because i cannot find this anywhere i have been doing this project for two years and i've searched the internet the newest things i've seen were like maybe 2015 i'm still not really even sure what standalone i'm going to use because uh you know this has taken a lot of my time but um just so you know i'm an electronics technician by trade so i'm not afraid of wiring and i do understand relays and whatnot I'm thinking about doing a video on that as well because it seems to me that this computer turns things on and off by sending out a positive voltage instead of grounding things like the old computer did. And you can accomplish a lot of that with relays. And I can get into a video about that if there's enough interest with this one. 
So anyway, uh, check out Wilbo666. Don't let the name fool you. He's not satanic. He'll even tell you that. And for heaven's sakes, get a Toyota service repair manual. Get the both of them. Because these are invaluable for this project. Talk to you later.